Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. All right, welcome to this episode of Eco Ask Why. Today, we're going to be digging into the topic of power monitoring and why why is that important to you? So we have our local res, uh, expert, Mr. Mike Rathen, with us, and he is going to be digging into this topic with us uh, as we go forth through the day. So there's a lot of uh, uh, technical jargon and things like that when you when you run across people talking about power monitoring. So Mike, maybe just to kick us off, Explain to our listeners what power monitoring is exactly from, you know, from, from the aspect that we're taking it from an industrial standpoint. Well, I think you consider power monitoring kind of like uh, your wife. It could be very good or not so good. Um, no, really. Um, power monitoring in an industrial environment is a cure for a lot of sins, potentially, right? Understanding what's happening with the consumption of the power in a, in, a, in a facility, being able to diagnose problems that are developed internally through issues with a distribution system or problems that could be associated with the utility feed to the plant, um, and then just managing your resource. All of that can be driven through, uh, uh, really from a basic power monitoring scheme up to a more elaborate one that really would allow a company to have a finite control and understanding of their power consumption and utilization. Okay. So, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking from a power monitoring standpoint from a plant, we, we talk a lot about one lines here at ECO. So is there a particular place on a one line that an industrial end user should consider maybe as a starting point or somewhere like that to, you know, to get going? I think uh, probably f- to get your biggest bang for the buck, starting at that service entrance, probably would be the give you the biggest understanding of the power consumption, power quality that's coming into the facility, and then all electrical components are being exposed to that, right, or u- utilizing those factors. That's a great place to start, and, and that could look as simple as a single meter, um, connected to that piece of, uh, of incoming electrical distribution equipment that would then ma- monitor that information and be able to store that information locally or be integrated and provide that information to um, a collection system, a DCS, a PLC, or just a general collection database that would then allow a user to uh, diagnose and understand that information. Okay. You know, we've we've talked about on, on previous episodes the the age of the infrastructure in America, right? And there's a lot of age, uh, aging equipment out there. There's a lot of uh, devices that are already installed. You know, if I if I'm running a plant that's 25 plus years old, you know, I would imagine that that distribution equipment has seen some wear and tear. So. The ability to to start a project like this on with an existing infrastructure, right? Where where should we consider or start looking with with that type of equipment? It, do we need to install new things, or is there things that potentially may be already there that we could utilize, or you know, from a from a backbone standpoint, just trying to to give our listeners, because I'm sure there's guys out there or, or, or listeners out there that can can relate to this. Sure, I guess I look at this. There's, there's obviously a lot of ways to start. Most of, most of the facilities aren't starting from ground zero with no equipment, right? As you suggest, it's, there could be older equipment, some newer equipment sprinkled in there, and a wide variety of, of potential devices out there that are capable of collecting um, power information. I think the challenge uh, and where I try and focus with, with the people I'm working at is let's build out a foundation that as technologies are introduced, as new equipment is introduced to the electrical infrastructure, that there is a foundation in place that you can easily plug into, 
capture that data and move it along to subsystems that allow you to analyze, collect, and store that information. So that could start with a basic industrial network. Right? What is the means, what's in place right now as we look at, at a typical industrial facility, what's there right now in between all of the potential, the, the electrical rooms, the substations, what's in place in terms of a network, a data highway, so to speak, right? That we're, we can dump this data on and move it throughout the process. So I, I would typically start there. And then once I'm comfortable that even in an isolated case where I'm just, let's, let's start at, the, at a service entrance, that I've got that, that data network that I can move the information on. Then I'm gonna look at the devices that are existing. All right, do they have an inherent capability to communicate over some protocol that's hopefully not 25 years old, that's proprietary or something of that nature that we could plug into a traditional network environment and move that information? Because that will play into it. Do I, you know, do I need to get some new meters in there or some new devices on some breakers to be able to collect that information? So I think it really starts there. And then obviously, as soon as we start using the word network, right? the uh, IT light starts flashing off in a lot of people's eyes and brains, right? And, and that's gonna be a piece of this. And I think that's one of the bigger challenges for a lot of our customers is, you know, at what point does a corporate IT or a traditional IT person get involved and the E&I people take over or don't? And where is that gray line? Who controls that? And it's different in, in my experience, every customer we go to. So I always try and be on, be in front of that, and um, drive the conversation towards. Uh, I'll seek out whatever IT entity is involved at a customer's location, and start talking to them about what we're what we're thinking about doing, what are the some of the approaches around an industrial network that makes sense. Start to build some confidence and trust with those people that. They have somebody they can work with that isn't just setting them setting them up to uh, you know create a problem within their network. So when you're talking about IT and power, those worlds until recently really are separate. So is it is it a, is it a line of responsibility gap, or is it a gap of basically terminology? Right, power guys don't speak the IT language. IT guys typically don't speak power language. Right, I mean. It, we're, we're moving large amps and volts, and then ITs are, are working in, in Ethernet IPs and TCPs and, you know, the, all these different switches. So where is the bigger gap? Is it the, the responsibility of who owns what, like you mentioned, or is it is it just that language barrier? I think it's both. I think you're all over it. The responsibility to that ownership line varies Right. The other piece that plays into that, as you suggest, the the language is different, but that's based upon, I think, your understanding, right, and your knowledge base. Um, IT guys are typically very comfortable in that world of of switching, right, manipulating data, controlling where data is flowing, controlling speeds, um, that type of architecture. And usually us guys from the power world, all we know is we've got, the, yeah, there's a blue hose on there that spits out some information, right? That's what it means to us, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's what we've kind of always seen it as. The reality is, you know, in, in manufacturing, even beyond just this power conversation, the mixture of those two worlds, the IT and the OT slash power, you know, that, that's, it's becoming more and more central to the types of equipment and processes that you can drive with the technologies that are out today. So I would like to think that, that that ownership line is getting more and more resolved, right? Who's going to take care of what? But I think the knowledge base is starting to overlap to a greater degree. I don't think we're all the way there <laughs> where we're still not having to kind of segue a project, a power monitoring project between IT and electrical and power. But I do, I do see where that knowledge base is starting. It's becoming more, in, more conclusive or inclusive between these groups right. that have to be able to play within that environment. So, but what about OT, right? So you have your, your OT la uh, layer that, from an industrial standpoint, 
most of our listeners are probably playing with on a regular basis. They're used to the OT. Is it power monitoring? Does it play on that level, or are we do we need to go past that to the IT? So it can go both. Let's talk about, what, you know, I think that everything starts at is what is the need you're trying to solve or what is the problem that you're trying to identify and solve. And if part of that, so here's an example, let's say, let's say your corporate initiative is to make a significant, let's say, a 15% reduction in consumption of resources. And obviously electrical power is one of those, right? So um, having the ability to take power monitoring, power consumption information, and be able to plug that into a network and be able to push it through a firewall, right, through the DMZ zone up to a corporate infrastructure, that may be the solution to that, right? So, so, but once again, we're kind of crossing over those two worlds, potentially from an OT, right, that operational network of the PLCs and all the electrical components. We're crossing over to firewall to the business systems, potentially, right, where somebody at a corporate level could look at that from a perspective of dollars and cents and be able to make sense of that. Uh, so when you cross that line, in my, in my mind, now you enter the the... The, the term network security comes into play, right? Absolutely. Really, and this is what it's all boiling down to, right? There's a reason why they call it a firewall. That firewall exists between the business systems and the OT for a reason, right? We don't, we obviously don't want the ability to go from one to the other for obvious reasons. So you don't want somebody that only has knowledge of business systems being able to access an operational system you also, on, on reverse, don't necessarily want an electrician being able to access the accounting software on the business system, right? So, right. Um, the, the, so the security involved, right, that's really the elephant in the room in all this conversation, right? If we're going to be able to um, comfortably work a project and with the anticipation that some of these boundaries are going to have to be crossed or at least some handshaking being done, we're going to need to make sure that we're having a very confident and informative discussion about network security. So who would typically own that, though, right, the, the, the security portion of a power monitoring project? Well, typically at that point, that's when the IT folks are going to become involved. So traditionally right now, the OT, the electrical kind of guys, they're just trying to make systems work, right? And there's a, a very l limited or no expectation that that information is going to pass to the outside world. Whereas from the IT perspective, yes, there's gonna be a lot of interconnectivity potentially to the outside world. And that's where the your traditional IT or entities within uh, a corporation or uh, even a facility, they're generally tasked with managing that security side of a system. Okay, I got it. Let's shift. We, we, we've talked a lot about IT security networking the topic is power monitoring. So the, the high-level manager, the, the plant manager, the plant engineer, the, the guys who get the energy bills and have to consume that data, right? Essentially, the, the, the power points of, of power monitoring. What, what are they? Return on investment. What, what would a, a user get from installing this power monitoring system? So I think it starts basically there. Um, traditionally, most most of the customers that I'm engaged with, the conversation really starts from that, hey, we, we, we care about how we're utilizing our resources. Um, we're obviously paying in an industrial environment a very big utility bill every month. And being able to uh, effectively and efficiently manage that power consumption with still being able to produce the product that's going out the back door you know, bring those, bring that together and understanding how you can um, make that um, efficient as possible. Power monitoring can speak to that, all right? So I think it really starts there with understanding and be able to manage your consumption. But from that, what we end up finding out is it's not just a matter of seeing, you know, the voltage and the current and the kilowatts. What we understand at some point, especially in the industrial environment, is the type of, uh, of equipment that we are, we are powering, right, which is the big consumers of that power are motors within, within a plant, right? That has a certain impact on our power consumption. 
and that's expressed in something that's called a power factor. So depending on how much of that motor slash inductive load there is, which generally is going to be quite significant, that's going to drive our power factor in a certain direction. And the utility company that's sending us that bill every month sees that to some degree as a waste of energy. Okay. So being able to not only look at how much power we're consuming, but how, how is, how are we consuming that voltage and current, right? Based upon a type of loading, understanding that, and then making changes in our distribution system to accommodate some of these factors is one way of um, managing um, or minim minimizing, you know, extra costs within that utility bill. Okay. Well, all right, for the listeners, because not every, every listener out there gets the bills, analyzes the bills, things like that. High level of what power factor is, and then maybe a good example of an action you could take, like on an induction, some induction motor loads, what the power monitor would do. So some actions you could take as an end user from power monitoring data to impact that power factor. Sure. So it is based. Power factor is is the measurement. It's the true measurement of the characteristic of what's happening between voltage and current, as it's being consumed by anything from a light bulb to a motor. Right. So uh, power factor typically gets uh, expressed as a leading or lagging power factor, and that's an indication of, in whole, the load that's placed upon that 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 power service. Is it more inductive? motors, right? Motors, heaters, that type of load, or is it more capacitive, which would be your electronics, potentially your VFDs, your computers. It's not common to find an industrial manufacturer that's going to have a leading power factor or that capac more capacitive, right? Just because of the nature of, of having a lot of motors to do work. Now, um, potentially, if you're like in that data center kind of environment, I got a big data center, maybe that's something that is a little bit more capacitive. Um, I don't traditionally work in that, in that industry, but I could see that. So why it is concerning, though, is uh, as that power is being utilized in these I I inductive loads, right, the way the power is consumed and not fully utilized is what affects the utilities look at your consumption okay i'll leave it at that but um, quite often we can see places throughout the country where utilities will will give you a penalty if your power factor is ranging too low or towards too low on the inductive side okay because it's not it's really not an efficient use of power is what it comes down to right you're you're you're, you're you're driving 500 horsepower of load, but you're having to use more power to actually get that 500 horsepower of load moving, right? So looking at applying that, right, the, the, what the power factor is and, and, and what it really means to consumption of power, if I have a power monitor on my system and I can see, okay, um, yeah, the utility company's right. They're hitting me with that penalty every month. I have a, I'm running at, a, let's say, a 0.3 power factor a very low power factor, which means I've got high inductive loads, I could then look at a pro potential project of adding capacitance to offset some of that inductance, right? Bring the power factor or the, the, the power consumption back closer back to unity and potentially get the power utility off my, off my bill for that power factor surcharge. So by using that basic information from the power monitoring, we can look, we can assess, we can have the information necessary to look at making a change in that distribution for better power consumption. Perfect. That that painted a really good picture for me. Hopefully it did for the listeners. Now let's let's keep painting that picture. Let's go to the user experience. So and and maybe you can talk about it from a couple of different levels. Is this an HMI only? Is this access through a a, a browser how is this a another screen inside of a uh, control room at a, at a plant typical scenarios just to kind of paint what this actually looks like from the end user standpoint so 
in what I'm doing in working right now, this is kind of the exciting part of, of working in this technology. So let's step back. What's been the tradition um, probably for the last, however far you want to go back in time, you know, five to 50 years is there's some sort of a big clunky digital meter, right? That's hanging on a piece of electrical gear, uh, that main substation or that service entrance. That you have to walk out yeah, to. And, yep, and, you, and, 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 that, and that's what you did back in the day, or even still today. You would, uh, if you suspected something or you were just interested, you would walk out to that, to that big clunky meter. And I'm talking about digital meter. Uh, hopefully we're beyond just an analog meter because that really does nothing to tell us about what's really happening other than measuring. But we'll have that digital meter, and it's got a little display on it. And, you know, I could scroll through tons of registers and menus and see a bunch of different values there. But it's really in the moment, right? It's, it's, it's not really an effective tool in terms of I'm trying to manage my power or I'm trying to diagnose things, right, that are going on my distribution system. So it brings this bring us up to today or in the last 10 years with technology. And this is where we kind of get back to the network being the foundation of a good um, power monitoring system. So I could have really any kind of a meter that's collecting basic voltage and current information. If I can transmit that information over a network to a laundry list of visual aids, computers, software programs, databases, and there, there's a lot of them out there that fit in this space, then I can have that information presented to me if I'm, if I'm the champion or I'm the guy that's tasked with managing this environment and diagnosing what's going on. You know, now I can have a good visual reference. Things such as dashboards, things such as a visual one-line diagram showing power consumption and alarms um, on my computer screen. All those things are now very achievable Wow! when we reach this point. So you're, you're, you're talking about a, a, a virtual one line that gives me information, power consumption. I mean, that, that could go everywhere from operations to safety. So many areas, it, seems, it sounds like, that this uh, power monitoring would impact. And you're right there, Chris. Um, like I said, this is what it's, to me is exciting about it because it's really open. You know, there's always been the the overriding factor in in working with electrical equipment and working electrical gear, whether you know you're a traditional electrician or a power guy, is you know there's a huge safety factor for doing our jobs. And at some point, we have to interact with this equipment. Having the ability on a on a computer screen or an HMI to see very concise status of electrical equipment and the parameters of the power without actually having to walk up to that meter or to put my hands on that gear, right? You know, the safety factor just really moves at that point in time. So obviously safety, I'm a big proponent of that in just terms of safety. Not to mention having that information readily available in front of me. Um, not having to scroll through a little tiny screen on a meter through 5,000 parameters and then try and determine what did that information just tell me. Yeah. So th this virtual, I, I like the word you use, and I think we bounce that around quite a bit now, is having a virtual one line or a virtual distribution diagram um, in that computer or that HMI dashboard environment. What I can do with that information on a system in front of me right now, in terms of diagnostics and management, I can do in, in, in within seconds with that information. Where 10 years ago, that might take me a week of poking around inside of an electrical distribution system and all the devices that are there to get an understanding of what's happening. Right, right. And not to mention, I'm sitting in the comfort of my chair at my desk doing it now. So you can do reporting from a system like this? Absolutely. So, you know, Data is data, right? Once we have the ability to uh, pull that data from these devices that are actually doing the measurement, and we can we can house that information, it makes it a little easier for me to tell my story to the people that I'm engaging with in in, in managing this environment, managing the power, or diagnosing, trying to determine what the next project is to make our systems better. So being able to um, quickly uh, affect a report 
based on that data that is being collected, quite often these conversations can get quite technical. But if I can keep it in, in, in simple numerical kind of values and, and basic information that I could spit out of a report from a system similar to this, that makes your case. That, that makes it much easier to move this data throughout an organization Absolutely. and be understood. Absolutely. So from a, from a greenfield standpoint, you know, we, we deal with a lot of industrial manufacturers that, that have been in place, but then there are a lot of new projects coming too. If you're a front-end engineer, design engineer, project engineer on a greenfield that's coming in, what technology should we be considering and looking at from a specification standpoint, starting up a new, uh, potentially a new plant to get this capability? So I, I think it starts, uh, I don't think there's a lot of, you know, at this day and age with, with greenfield buildings that are going up there, that nobody's considering a, at least a basic power monitoring and integration scheme, right? People are aware of their environment. And, and, and are w willing and able to interject that in the scheme. So I, but I think what comes into play here is there's more of a look now as making power monitoring more of an integrated piece to the facility, whether that's going to be, and regardless of what time, whether we're talking a university campus or an industrial um, manufacturing plant, um, having that power monitoring and that data designed and integrated within the building operating systems, within the, um, it could be as simple as, as the HVAC systems come into play there, down to an operational DCS or SCADA system that's managing the process throughout the plant. I think that's becoming um, more and more the norm at this point in time, is understanding a certain level of integration is going to be expected and a certain level of, of at least basic data and information associated with power being easily integrated across multiple platforms that are used for the management of facilities and processes. Okay. Thank, thank you for walking us through that. So from a, that, that w took us down the Greenfield Road. I know we kind of touched on it earlier, but let's, let's go back to the existing manufacturer and give some guidance there. So I, I'm that engineer. I'm trying to, to spec up a project for power monitoring in my plant. Probably want to start pretty small to get it going. Proof of concept, get some buy-in from some management. Hey, look, look what this can do for me. Look at the type of data I can provide you. What guidance would you give that engineer or that project manager that's, that's listening right now to, to areas to start or things to consider? I would say if, if we're building out that infrastructure of the distribution from the design state right there, I would start with basic power monitoring, right? With a, let's use the term a smart meter. So a, a, a device that is capable of collecting data and communicating that da data over a wide variety of protocols, of communication so protocols. Would that be a smart meter on just an, uh, a section of switch gear? Will be a place to start. Here's yeah. Here's how I go. Let, let's let's say I'm building out a hospital or a manufacturing plant. I would start at my substations. Okay. okay. So start at the substation itself. So so if I have a substation, let's let's say I have two or three of them, but let's just just go from one. If I have a substation that's converting my higher medium voltage over through a transformer down to some forty volt distribution switch gear, that's kind of your main point of of management right there, right? So applying a smart meter. Um, at that feed to that substation on the low voltage side, really that gives me uh, a good collective understanding of the power consumption and power quality for that substation as it's being applied to the different loads. Right. Okay. And then I would build upon that, right? Mm -hmm. So um, no two plants that are the same. You, you, you might be in a plant where there's one substation. There, there's one feed from the utility. It goes through that substation, and that's how the, the power is being distributed throughout the plant. So I would definitely start with a, a meter there and then build upon that. It doesn't take a lot. We're not saying you have to go out and, and, and invest in a lot of software and server and data capability. It can start as simple as, you know, a basic meter um, that has the ability to connect and move that data and could be as simple as information in a spreadsheet on a computer right to get started there you go right yeah it can be that simple mm -hmm. but it really starts with you know kind of where our conversation started today two main things is having a basic industrial network that we can move data on right 
And that can be sim very simple as a traditional, you know, industrial CAT 5V or 6 industrial network. And then having a, uh, a meter with some, some basic communication technology that will be able to communicate information over a couple different protocols, move that information to the network. Once we've got it there, we can build from that, right? Right. So let's start with being able to collect the data on a consistent basis and then be able to move that data. Okay. So take one more step past that. So we have we have a bunch of meters. Let's say we've, we've reached that point. Just trying to give the listeners an idea of a basic infrastructure, what that would look like. And, and we typically, we, we don't dig deep into manufacturers here, so we can stay pretty brand neutral. Uh, but a hardware, basic hardware requirements for a, a system that you want to start pulling in your, your all your submeters, your substations rather, uh, with, with your meters. Uh, maybe you want to add some individual loads that you want to start looking at some special breakers that, that control certain sections of the plant. What would, what would that basic hardware typically look like to get started with a power monitoring system? So going from the devices that you described, the power meters, um, beyond that, we're talking about submeters. We could be talking about trip devices on breakers associated with that distribution system. Coming from those smart de devices over the network, then we're looking at, you know, typically what would be a software package. Okay, for aggregation. For data aggregation. And that, that, can, that can happen a number of ways with... Um, uh, pre-configured software packages that come with its own PC where you have the storage capability built in and uh, there's a wide variety of those out there they're hopefully if I'm looking at those they have a flexibility to be able to not only communicate with their brand of meters and trip devices but across the spectrum of other OEMs devices and bring that data in be able to aggregate it in, in database form and then have a means, a dashboard, a visual means for you to interact with that information, right? That's on the software side of it. That's where our diagnostics, our reporting, and all of that comes into play. The other piece of that that we've, that we've also touched on today is from that basis of that system now, we can then have the opportunity to integrate that to other systems or to corporate information or to business information, right? Um, it may make sense in certain processes that if I've got a, a DCS type operating system on my plant process, that there could be certain entities within that, such as a mixing application or other application that is, uh, that is moving product and, and or chemical within a process and we can determine the the function or the operation of that particular application by the power consumption right so something such as a mixer so even something as a, 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 as a pump we can kind of see or inter, interject that information into a controlling system based upon the power consumption so okay. that's, that's that's just one aspect of that integration where it could make sense within it within an operating system that's pretty cool that's it. Technology's just come so far. It, it, I know this is a topic you're pretty passionate about as well, Mike. It, there are there any, you know, as we as we wrap up here, any items of uh, or advice that you would give listeners to get started moving forward that you that you want to part them with with your knowledge. Here's what what I would suggest. When I really started getting and started in some of these power, power monitoring systems. I think what scared me initially is, is I looked and talked to the OEMs, right, that, that are um, driving some of the componentry and the software and all these things within the system. Initially, when, you, when, when I had these conversations and, and then started trying to apply these to, to an actual uh, facility or environment, I was shocked at, at, at the price right, or the dollars that, that were involved here. The more I learn, though, and the more I uh, better understand the technology, and this is my advice, is you don't have to enter into this in a capital project capturing every ounce of power information throughout an entire facility and look at this as a capital project that's going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Start small. Start with one meter. All right? 
Um, and, and typically, that's how I'll work with customers on is, is let's, let's start with, with what we can manage in terms of budget and time. Let's get um, a system up and going, start collecting data. Let's show how we can use it. Um, show, how, show the benefits, basically, on investing in power monitoring and power management on a small scale that can then be easily scaled throughout a facility. Absolutely. And that, that would be my advice. Prove it out. And then, then you can walk it out even further. And it, you, want, you gotta get the buy-in. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And show the value. This has been great. Uh, hopefully this brought a lot of value to our listeners. Definitely a topic you're passionate about, you're very knowledgeable about. So thank you for taking the time uh, with us today, Mike. Always enjoy it. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by an electrical equipment company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y dot com.